So I mentioned on Twitter this week that um, I had a question about how to transfer data um, in MARC records <coughs> in formats that can be utilized uh, by GIS software. So um, I mentioned that, that there is a process you can work through. Um, requires you to um, make use of certain pieces of data. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the process right now so you can see kind of how this works. Um, I'm going to step you through um, the entire process like you don't have any of the uh, parts set up. So um, the first thing I did was um, I downloaded some records. So these records here, uh, there's 44. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to process those. Um, I need the data in UTF-8. Um, unfortunately, I know these are Mark 8 records, so I'm going to go ahead and translate it to UTF-8 and process the data. Um, so now I have records. Um, the important pieces of information uh, in these particular data sets are going to be the title, a uh, description, um, and then data in the coded record field in the 034. If it's not in the 034, then essentially you're not going to be able to make use of the data. Uh, folks have asked about the 255. Uh, the problem with the 255 is it's really a, a field that's more for human readable um, information. Because of that, um, you end up finding that the data that gets entered there is really irregular, um, especially when people are coding the degree, minutes, and second symbols. A lot of times they're not actually using the marked codes for degrees, minutes, and seconds. They're using soft signs and hard signs, um, which makes it really difficult to parse. We use the coded data, it's a lot easier to work with, it's regular, um, and hopefully if you're working with cartographic data, it's there. Now we can't just use the information in the 034, unfortunately. Um, while you can code data in the 034 in decimal degrees, um, it requires doing a mathematical conversion to take it out of degrees, minutes, and seconds. Most people don't know how to do that. And so data gets coded traditionally in um, degrees, minutes, and seconds. Uh, unfortunately, when you work with a GIS data file like KML, um, those degrees, minutes, and seconds are difficult um, to parse regularly, especially if there's any variation. So it's just easier to convert the data to decimal degrees. Mark Edit provides a function for that. It's edit, edit shortcuts, mathematical functions, convert to decimal degrees. Um, it's already tagged for the 034 and the various fields that are required. We go ahead and process the data and we end up getting 44 records have been processed. So we have our data. Um, we're going to go ahead and compile that back into MARC. That was processed. So now what we have is we have a UTF-8 data file, and we have a data file that now includes um, decimal the degree encoding. So that's pretty much the, the first step. All right. So the second step is we're going to need to um, take those data files um, and convert them to um, one by one files because the reality is while you can code the data in KML to support multiple data elements, each one of these records is its own unique element. So probably for the purposes of doing translations, you're probably going to want individual KML files. At least that's the assumption I'm going to make. So we're going to go ahead and split this file. So we're going to go ahead and uh, split. So mark split. processed. We're going to set a destination folder for it and we're going to go ahead and create a new one uh, just so that we have it. KML. Oops. Too many folders there. All files. Let me get rid of this one below it. So, yeah. All right, so KML files is where we're going to put it. And we're going to create uh, one record per file. I'm not going to use the control name as the file name. And we go ahead and generate 44 records. So we go back to our file here, and now we have 44 individual mark records. All right, next step. Um, so we need to translate the data from MARC uh, to KML. So in order to do this, um, I created a really simple uh, XSLT. Um, you'll find it here. 
um, in my GitHub registry, uh, mark edit XSLT files, uh, mark 21 slim to KML, really simple. Uh, basically, it's just looking for a couple pieces of data and it's going to output it into a polygon. Um, so uh, you can find it there. If you go back to mark edit, we have to register that um, XSLT with mark edit. I'm going to assume you downloaded it and put it somewhere where you want it. You go to tools, edit XML functions, uh, select add, enter a function alias, so probably something like to the path where you um, downloaded your file, um, preferably into the Mark Edit XSLT directory. Then we go to formats, uh, we tell it that we're starting in Mark, and we're ending in something else. Uh, pick whichever engine you want. Um, I actually prefer Saxon, um, it's what I end up using most of the time. When you're done, click save. Uh, once you've saved it, uh, inside of here, you'll start finding things like Mark uh, KML, that's great, that's what you want to see. Um, and I'm not going to run it from there. So I have 44 individual files. I need to create KML files. So I'm going to run a batch process. You can find this in two spots. One is to search here and find batch process records, or go to tools and mark processing and batch process records. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select this folder where those data files live now. Uh, so the ones we just created. So that's going to be in the KML files. Then we do go ahead and tell it we're processing the MRC files and we're outputting these files as KML. Um, then we go here and we find marked KML and we process the data. Now, mark edit's going to go through and it's going to um, select the uh, KML process, XSLT. Um, translate the uh, XML files and process them um, into uh, the KML format. Um, so it says we're done. So let's close these up. Uh, we go back to our folder. Uh, if we go underneath the KML files, we'll find a processing files folder. And inside of that now you'll see all the individual KML files. So I'm going to click on one of these. And that should open this up into Google Earth. So, uh, first file um, goes ahead and opens up, and we see we have the quadrangle here. And let's see, uh, this is the Amityville Quadrangle of New York. And so we see here um, inside of the Google Earth that the polygons have been created around um, the area uh, that the um, quadrangle covers. Um, so um, we need to adjust the way the polygons are shaped, colors, um, change the XSLT file. That's buried as a style inside the XSLT file. Um, if you want to embed multiple documents, you just have to change the XSLT file um, and not break the records into individual files. Um, uh, but that's pretty much the process and where everything is um, so that you can find it. Uh, same process works whether you're working with um, the Windows version of MarkEdit uh, current version or the Mac version of MarkEdit current version. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to let me know.